It has been a tumultuous year uh, since Jeremy Corbyn last took the podium uh, at Labour Party conference. We've had Brexit, we've had the toppling of a British Prime Minister and a Labour Party at war with itself. Now, people say about the Labour Party that it's like a married couple where not much going on between the sheets, in fact, separate beds, but they can't afford a separate flat. Can he bring it back together, unite the party and appeal to the country? Honestly, it's, it's been near the divorce sort of stage. Um, I think there's been counselling and I'm certainly ready to give it another go. <laughs> We've had our moments, but like families, you know what, when our back's against the wall and someone picks on us and our communities, then we'll come back fighting. We will, <laughs> yeah, and we will come back fighting. I was prepared for lots of argy-bargy and insults and abuse, but actually people have been very friendly. Perhaps we are still in separate beds, but you know, there's still time to, to sneak into the bedroom on occasions and perhaps stay there. Have a bit of... Panky panky. I, I think I've taken this too far, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> so all sides of Labour's pretty polarised debate are emphasising peace and harmony and coming together and overcoming divisions. But let's not pretend that there's anything other than some obvious tensions rumbling beneath the surface. So the question is, other than the platitudes, what in practice, what concrete steps can take place on all sides to bring this party together. Giving the, the Parliamentary Labour Party the opportunity to elect uh, a substantial proportion of the Shadow Cabinet. I think that would be a great way of building bridges. Obviously he can't have MPs that are actively hostile, but you know there are a lot of MPs in the Labour Party who were willing to give him a shot, but then kind of got swept into the no confidence vote anyway. And I'm sure that some of them would come back and he needs to welcome them back with open arms. I don't think there's many policy differences. I think if you actually get down to the bread and butter of it, there's very little we disagree on. I am seriously depressed by actually being talked about it as two wings of the party. This isn't what I joined the Labour Party for. We are in one family. So why don't you unite and then behind their leader and take on the Tories? That's the most important thing. I remember feeling actually rather heartened when Jeremy first got in and talked about, you know, straight talking honest politics and being able to disagree with each other in a civilised, respectful way. Part of me feels that's gone out the window a bit. We need to recapture that if we're going to go forward together. One thing we could all agree on the Labour Party is uh, it's not been great for the old stress levels, has it, what's been going on? Uh, so I'm going oh, to take my blood pressure just to see how has this taken its toll on me? Is that not good? I would say that's quite high at the minute. In fact, would you mind if I just redo it quickly? Look at all this political mayhem. If the Labour Party just calmed down, my blood pressure would go down. They're destroying my health. Quite possibly. You ever seen a one goose sailing on the ocean? Runs all me boys, runs all Ray. So, I'm on my way to the Blackie, which is a place I've spoken many, many times, because Momentum are having their own set of fringe events called the World Transformed. One of the biggest conflicts that we're, we're still battling with is the conflict between labour and capital. <laughs> the fact that, you know, we're being valued um, by our ability to sell our own labour. And what if you can't sell your labour? What if the market is rigged against you? A disclaimer, I'm part of Momentum. Now, I want to talk to them uh, about how we can, well, bring the labour family together and stop all the feuding and that. Can this great party with 116 years of history, can it, can it hold together somehow? I think it can, but I think the onus isn't just on Corbyn and Corbyn supporters. I think it has to be a cross-party effort to be able to unite and actually come around the values that have become incredibly popular. Is there something that can unite the Labour Party, Some, you know, because we're all talking about divisions? Well, yeah, I think ultimately we want a Labour-led government. We want a Labour government. We want to get the Tories out. Uh, there's a lot of consensus we saw across the party, certainly in domestic policies, that unites us. If we can actually like, have the party membership and the parliamentarians and the leadership in line, then we're a serious, credible electoral force. Big fan of momentum, aren't you, John? What do you think about the, the conference down the road? Uh, I went to it. Uh, I was welcomed. Uh, I went around it. Uh, I was quite interested uh, in seeing what was going on. I was excited by the number of people there. I was excited by the range of ideas being discussed. Um, this is John McTernan, the former player advisor. You've been seduced by momentum. This is John McTernan, a delegate from Campbell and Peckham and a Labour Party comrade. <laughs> oh, I'm getting a bit emotional. There's a massively positive side of what momentum stands for. I think there is a more negative side to it, which is the kind of more hostile attitude towards MPs and, and you know, the talk of these selections and all that. I think that's just... Uh, very unhelpful. Please welcome the leader of the Labour Party, Jeremy Corbyn.
No one will be convinced of a vision promoted by a divided party. We all agree on that. So I ask, so I ask each and every one of you to accept the decision of the members, end the trench warfare, and work together to take on the Tories. Jamie Corbyn has completely relaunched his leadership. What a torrid year. Everything thrown at him. The media, the parliamentary Labour Party, a lot of people to wilt under that pressure. More confident, more assured than ever. But more importantly, it was just a good speech. It was a speech that actually had detail. It wasn't just about slogans. It took the fight to the Tories. This will please a lot of people who've been worried, myself included, about where the leadership's been. So more of this. Build on this. This is good. Maybe, just maybe, Labour will be in a position to actually unite, take the fight to the Tories, remember them, ones in power, and have a shot at actually, actually winning enough support to change the country.